My name is Irene Wigner and uh, I am with the Fair Hope Public Library. I'm interviewing uh, Dr. Randy Hollinger at the Fair Hope Library. Uh, this is Monday, June 21st, 2021. And I'm going to ask some basic biological details first to get them out of the way. Um, and your, your <coughs> name is? Lewis Randall Hollinger, okay. Jr. Okay. And you were born? April 19, 1947. All right. Okay. And, and what branch of service were you in? Dental Corps. Okay. And that was part of what? The Army. Do you remember what the highest rank is that you? Oh, sick, Colonel. <laughs> were you in a war then, or? No. So I got I got out of dental school right about when Vietnam was ending, so they weren't weren't sending any new people over there. So you got how <coughs> did you get into the military then? Were you drafted or did you enlist or no, was no, it no. OCS? No, no, no. I enlisted, but I'm thinking exactly when. Uh, it was in dental school. Okay. And. I figured that would be a good experience. You know, get a lot of education from it, um, and uh, travel, and you know, I just thought it'd be nice to start out in the military, and so, I really enjoyed it. So then, when you got in, um, when you left dental school, <coughs> then you were fully in within the service in the dental program, in the dental service program. When I left dental school, yes, yes, it went straight to Germany. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, did you nice. go by yourself, or did you bring a family, yes. or? Well, alone. Well, I mean, there were other guys there, but. Uh, but did but not have family members. You didn't have family no. members. Where was family? Where were you from? Mobile. Okay. Alabama. All right. So you were over, but you were in Germany then, in probably 1970s, right? Was that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, how did how did you like that? How did you like? Germany? Well, I enjoyed it. I really did. Uh, I was in the Army Dental Corps for 20 years, and wow. and then I was in private practice of dentistry for 20 years. So, I got Difference. good good exposure to both. What did you see as the differences? Well, a lot of camaraderie in the Army. You meet a lot of people that you see f for years. Uh, when you're in your, I guess, lower 40s or high 30s, you know it's really nice having a bunch of guys around to hang around with. And uh, I, I really enjoyed the military. Okay. What did, do you, did anything in particular that you remember that you enjoyed so much? I liked the field trips. Uh, I got an emergency combat medical badge and uh, got to use that a lot out in the field and that, that, that was kind of neat. Where was the uh, field? <coughs> wherever I was stationed at that time. Uh, I had been around Fort Sam Houston, probably spent more time in the field there than any place, any other particular place. But every, everywhere you're stationed, uh, you end up going out to the field because you have to keep trained. Okay. On that. Uh, it's completely different <laughs> than sitting in a dental office. How is that so? Uh, we do a lot more. When we go to the field, we don't do so much dentistry because we're really at an army base mm -hmm. and we're just training. So we do some dentistry just to st stay uh, up to date on it. but. Uh, you, you really don't do a lot of dentistry out in the field, you know, like you'd go to the field for maybe two or three days to, to a week somewhere in there and just do field training, which was kind of fun, but uh, we do a lot of dentistry. So what is field training, I guess, is the <coughs> question. A lot of things that uh, dentists don't normally do. Oh, okay. Uh, we train on... Uh, helping the uh, medics uh, keep people alive. Uh, we do train for dentistry in the field. You know, mm -hmm. we set up the dental chairs and curtains and, you know, all this stuff, you know, like we're doing dental procedures, but we really don't do very much. 
a little bit just to, just to keep with uh, the training, but uh, not too much. So your patients are soldiers? Oh yeah, in, okay. in that situation, <clears throat> back when, uh, when I first came in the Army, the uh, sponsors could, could bring their dependents over, at least the wives, I'm not sure about the kids, but I think the kids too, because usually there were pediatric dentists at most larger posts. And, and they got a lot of benefits, you know, they got some uh, dental privileges. Do you remember any of your uh, teachers, your professors, that, and any of them strike you or remember? Recall? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Well, what do you remember about quite, them? Quite a few of them. Yeah, what do you uh, remember about them? I remember the ones that were kind of wacky, you know, we really had fun with, you know. Uh, like what? Playing jokes on each other, you know, just doing crazy things. If it's just somebody training you for dentistry procedures, you know, that's fine, but you don't tend to remember those people too much, like 40 years from now. Well, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the hardest part of the training? Bad weather was always a bad part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pouring down rain, that, that's no fun. But uh, it wasn't really all that hard. It was, I, I really enjoyed it. I was in really good shape back in those days. And uh, we had all kinds of uh, athletic type stuff. I mean, not races or anything, but, huh. but we did have some races carrying weapons to get some training on how you carry them, how you can move with them, how you can use them, things like that. Did you ever have to do that? Oh yeah, okay. uh, it, against people. Yeah. Oh no. 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 <laughs> no, no, that was, no. That that's just at the range. So was that what was the hardest part of that military life then? Probably just being away from home. Uh, you, you don't get to see you know your parents, your sisters, uh, friends from home. But uh, it really doesn't. When you're overseas, you, you're. I went to Korea and Germany. And you, you really kind of, uh, you just don't get to see people that you normally would see at home. Mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of hard. Once you get back, you know, at least you're in the States, and people might not mind, you know, flying up to uh, Fort Riley, Kansas to, to see you, something like that. But, you know, going across the ocean and all, you don't have too many people drop in <laughs> to see you over there. So how long were you in Germany? Three years. What did you do while you were over there then for, for going around? Were you able to travel? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, looking back on it, we should have done more historical type traveling, but I got real involved in skiing. And uh -huh. I spent so much of my leave time skiing over there. <laughs> But uh, really, you know, I was a young guy then, it was, it was really fun. Yeah, can't do that in Mobile. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so what about in Korea? Were you able to ski there? Uh, no. no. You probably could if you wanted to, if you knew uh, some Koreans personally. Uh, you, they could probably take you to a, a ski slope. But uh, no, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just over there one year, so I was just kind of waiting to get home <laughs> the oh. whole time I was there. So what did you do for that one year? Were you able to <coughs> oh, see it, anything or get out? And well, I traveled around the country of, of Korea, but uh, not a great deal, but it's uh, very interesting. I'd never seen uh, people playing golf in the snow before. That was interesting. Hmm. They have... Um, <laughs> what they call ajimas, which are the female helpers t f t for doing everything. One of the things they do is on the golf course, and I'm not a golfer, I've never really played golf much, but the guys that play golf, when, when they're on the golf course, the ajima makes a little circle there, puts the golf ball down, and you tee off. And then they're, they're like two of them downrange, and they find the ball <laughs> in the snow. And while you're walking down to take your second shot, they're making a clear circle around your golf ball and crazy. Hmm. But uh, 
But it's mainly the Korean uh, officers that did, and not too many Americans did that. But for Korea, it's, it snows a lot there. <laughs> they enjoyed it. <laughs> what was, uh, what's the easiest part of the military s lifestyle that you were able to adapt to? Well, I didn't really have problems adapting to much of anything. Uh, why why do you think that was? Why? Yeah. I got to do all kinds of things. You know, I just I enjoyed most of the things we did there. It was a little uh, lonely at times, but uh, not too bad. What was it like when you had to uh, um, leave the Army, when you retired from it? <coughs> well, did I didn't go? have to leave. Um, we had been overseas three times. There comes a time where you just don't want to do another tour anywhere, mm -hmm. for me at least, and for a lot of guys. Uh, usually once they, they make over 20 years, that's the key. Mm -hmm. And you can get your pay. Uh, that's, a, that's a good time if, if you're not planning on going for general or something, staying in another 10, 12 years, uh, which I really wasn't. Uh, so at that time, I just went ahead and retired. So where did you, where was that? Overseas or here? That was at uh, <coughs> Fort Benning, Georgia. Ah. And, and so after you retired, did you return home here yeah. then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you able to come right back to your family and your community and all? Or? Oh, pretty much, yeah. I set up a practice uh, actually in Daphne. I ended up later moving to Fairhope, but uh, had, had a place in Daphne. Okay. And uh, so it's, it's pretty much like, because I didn't have a <coughs> really a private practice in the Army, so that was a real change, being in private practice. Did you like that? Yeah, uh, I always enjoyed dentistry. And I enjoyed my patients, because I, I like to talk a lot, and uh, which is not particularly good business-wise, but uh, <laughs> anyway. But when you're running your own business, uh, the, the practice, it's not just you just don't go in there and you have these assistants doing everything, everything is ready, you don't have to tell them anything, uh, like, the, you know, they're trained assistants in, in the Army, you know, they're corporals that do this and that, and first sergeants that do this and that, you know, and you spend all of them, you just go in and do dentistry every day. So that's a little different. Um, if I had my druthers, quite frankly, I would probably not have minded staying in the Army. If I, the reason I left the Army, they wanted, we were in Georgia, they wanted to send me back to Germany. Mm -hmm. And I, I really didn't want to go to, I, I enjoyed Germany, but I think it was the kind of time, you know, we'd already seen Germany, we lived there for three years. You're saying we now, before you were saying I, when you went there first, so yeah. you had other reasons then? I, I, I had a, a, a lady that uh, I met over there, and, uh, we did a lot of skiing together, stuff like that, and then uh, we we eventually just stayed together and got married back when we got back here. So that uh, that was a nice thing to have because you know a lot of people there are not a whole lot of women hanging around my army base. There are some, but especially officers that they, they don't really see a lot of the women you'd see just hanging around the base. You know, mostly it's the girl from home and that sort of stuff that people get attached to. Okay. But so you were, you and, and your wife were here in Georgia. Mm hmm So, and going back to Germany was not something you wanted no, to? No, no. I just didn't want to go back to Germany again. Uh, I liked it, but I knew that'd be three or possibly four more years overseas and it's just time to settle down. Were there people from the service that you still keep in touch with? Uh, not too many there. I, I can't think of anyone actually right in this area that was in the dental corps 
when when I was over there. So they, nobody they, ever calls you or is traveling? Not really. You know, I used to uh, telephonically chat to, to some of the old guys, but after a while, you know, I'm in Alabama and uh, the other guys in Michigan or something, it's just... Uh, Different. It, things just kind of mm. cool down and you so kind of stick the, more to local folks. It was easier then to pick up here in the community, you know, people that you already knew and played. Yeah. That was, that was easier. Um, and we, yeah, I was born in Mobile, but uh, I did come back here. Mm -hmm. I didn't, didn't want to stay in the Mobile anymore. I hope nobody's uh, taking offense <laughs> that lives in Mobile. <laughs> but uh, I just love it over here. But uh, uh, um, Did you join a veterans organization at all? No. No? Did not. No. Or, and there weren't any reunions of your groups? or. Oh, no. No. no, it was a small group and a big army. That's I thought I'd take it back. There was one guy, he was going from somewhere west of here down to Florida to see somebody. And he stopped by. This was like the first year I was out. And he, he just stopped by, by. He said, uh, coming through your part of town, you know, I'd like to stop and see you. You know, he, he just came by and visited for about a day, and, uh, but he was, he was just traveling. What, what are some things that you think life, like life lessons, things that affected you personally or maybe in the way that you work, that, that you learned from the military, from your service? Yeah, uh, <coughs> you know, you, you <coughs> when you're a captain, and I, actually, I was a first lieutenant, but I came into active duty as a captain. Uh, you're just learning stuff then. You know, you, you've been to some of the training, uh, but you haven't really gotten into the to the military yet. And you pick up a lot from the older guys, mm -hmm. and not necessarily just uh, older dental officers. Uh, like what? Oh, <clears throat> any officers, you know, the officers that uh, you have come in and uh, give lectures. Um, sometimes you, you meet them. Um, and the older officers, of course, in, in the dental corps, there, we have a lot of interactions with older officers that... Uh, How did that affect you? I just picked up... Uh, things that they do and say and, uh, you know, kind of got me going in the right direction. You know, some uh, lectures that, that were given by, say, a general officer, for, for instance, uh, that he'd just give you a lot of tips on you know, a situation like this, you know, try doing that. Or if you, if you want your, the, younger people in your organization to, to uh, respect you, you know, treat them right, and you know, just little life lessons like that. Okay. How to, how to act as an officer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not going around just screaming at people, telling them to do all this stuff, because <laughs> they won't really like you. That. They'll do what you say, but they, they won't be happy about it, so you have to kind of maintain your distance, but you just want to make sure everybody's getting Did the you ever see training. any of that going on? <clears throat> People kind of overdoing it? Yeah. Well, yeah, usually that's more like in uh, basic training. I mean, you see a lot of that then, but that's all, that's just part of the deal in basic training. They, they try to get you down to where you're not playing around anymore, you know, you, you're doing what they say when they say it, you know, they're just getting you to be a, an army And you went through officer. that, you went through, uh, as a, but you went through basic training then too? Well, you have, yeah, even basic the officers, officers go through basic training. Uh, not quite like the enlisted, they, they have a lot more basic training than we do. Because all officers have 
some training, whether it's dentistry or whatever, you know, most are, or a lot are college graduates. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a complete different situation there. Does your service impact your feelings about the military in general? How do you feel about it? Oh, I, I feel really good about the military. Uh, I'm getting a little worried about it now, quite frankly, but uh, I'm hoping things so we can get the kinks out of what's going on now, in my opinion, uh, militarily. So any message you would like to leave for future generations who might hear or see this interview? Well, I think a lot of people have bad feelings about the military. More, more so today than 40 years ago. But uh, I think you should, <clears throat> if it's something you might be interested in, just give it a try. You know, don't just say, oh, I'd never do that, I don't like those people. You might be surprised. I, re I really didn't think that I would like the military that much. I thought I'd go in and just get some good basic training, not basic training like uh, push-ups, but like learning how to do different things in dentistry. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of specialists that, uh, you know, you have specialists that do crowns and bridges and specialists that do uh, periodontal surgery and, you know, all that. And you, you pick up a lot mm -hmm. and uh, you get to, you know, do it basically for free. They're paying you to do it. But I enjoy the Army. You know, a lot of people don't have much good to say about the Army, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. Good. Okay. I think it did a lot to uh, get me on the straight and narrow. You weren't on the straight and narrow no. when you went in? When I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> you don't want to talk about that? No. Nah. <laughs> that can be embarrassing, too. <laughs> Well, thank you for taking your time to share your recollections. I appreciate well, it. Well, I wish I could have remembered more of my recollections. But 